Welcome to my channel Pharmacypedia. This is Dr. Shikha Chauhan and in this session we are going to learn a very important and interesting act that is Medicinal and Toilet Preparation Act 1955 and the Rules 1956. So before proceeding with the act, if you have still not subscribed to my channel Pharmacypedia, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel Pharmacypedia for getting further updates. So now let us begin to understand a very important act in the history of India that is about the Medicinal and the Toilet Preparations Act 1955. So let us first try to understand what was the purpose of establishing this act. So this act was actually framed. This act came into existence when it was realized that uh, alcohol is not only used for the preparation of medicinal substances uh, but also it is very much close to human mankind. So the use of alcohol in the medicinal preparations, in other toilet preparations, in the cosmetic preparations have to be limited down. Therefore, it was realized that there should be some sort of the control for the manufacturing and the usage of alcohol in variety of preparations. For example, medicinal preparations, we use alcohol in various types of the syrups and it was being found that these syrups were then actually not used in the way they were desired to be. Since uh, the use of alcohol for the preparation of medicines was necessary and it was also found that alcohol was either used for the drinking or the manufacturing of the perfumes is subjected to higher duties than that which is used for the medicine preparation. So the usage of the alcohol in these medicinal syrups was then later on not used to, for that desired purpose. So it was decided to establish an act that came into the way of the Medicinal and Toilet Preparation Act 1955. So the Excise Duty Act came in the force in 1955 for excise duty to be an effective control measure and duty needs to increase annually in relation to the inflation and income. So an additional excise duty was imposed on the usage of alcohol which was different for different products. It was different and lower for the medicinal product as compared to the toilet preparations like perfumes, like cosmetics and wide variety of the products. So what, let us first try to understand what is the excise duty. Excise duty is basically a type of the indirect test. Nowadays we have GST, we have earlier we had the VAT. Similarly, excise or excise tax is actually an inland test. It is an indirect test to be paid by the consumer. So it is different from the custom duties text. So the objective of establishing the Medicinal and Toilet Preparation Act was to levy and collect the excise duties. So it the aim was to curb all the irregularities of the previous act. So this act basically lays down the foundation to have the usage of alcohol by paying the excise duty for diff which is different for different sorts of the product and to have the effective usage and control of the alcohol. Before proceeding with the further acts, rules and regulations, we should be thoroughly about the definitions. So the four most desired definitions for the Medicinal and Toilet Preparation Act is bonded manufacturing. There are two types of the manufacturing whereby the alcohol is being stored is like bonded manufacturing and non-bonded manufacturing. So when we talk about the modern manufacturing, it is the manufacturing or the premises which is under direct control of the government. Whereas non-bonded manufacturing, they need to take the approval from the government, but otherwise they are the private organization organizations. So when we talk about the bonded manufacturing, it means the premises or any part of the premises which is approved, licensed for the manufacture and storage of medicinal and toilet preparations which can include alcohol, opium, Indian hemp and other narcotic drugs or narcotics on which duty has not been paid. This is very important. Then non-bonded manufacturer, it simply means the premises or any part of the premises approved and licensed for the manufacture and storage of the medicinal and toilet preparations and storage of medicinal and toilet preparation containing alcohol, opium, Indian hemp and other narcotic drugs or narcotics on which duty has been paid. So this is the basic difference. On the bonded manufacturer, the duty has not been paid. For the non-bonded manufacturer, the duty has been paid. 
other definitions which are of importance are like denaturated spirit or denaturated alcohol my dear students you must understand that alcohol of any strength can be rendered unfit for the human consumption by the addition of certain substances which are approved by the central government or by the state government with the approval of the central government next about the spirit store so it is the part of the bonded or the non bonded manufactory which is used for the storage of alcohol opium indian hemp or other narcotic drugs or narcotics which are purchased free of duty or at a prescribed rate of duty is specified in the schedule to the act so these are the official def definitions as per the act next we move on to the manufacturing of alcoholic preparations for a difference between both the types of the laboratories like in bond manufactory and outside the bond or outside bond manufactory so this is move one of the most important questions being asked which is about uh, as far as the act is concerned in the b farm as well as in the d farm so the, the primary differences between in bond manufacturer is that it is a total government organization which is licensed the construction of the bonded lab has to be as per the law which requires raw spirit store manufacturing room store room for finished products excise duty so the complete lab has to be designed in a way which has been as per the directions received as per the act for example you must have a finished room you must have a warehouse you must have the manufacturing room so all these the um, entry and exit points have to be controlled so the layout has to be designed as per the government norms the third is about the excise duty payable which on the removal of the goods from the bonded lot so once the product is out of the bonded lot they have to pay for the excise duty then bonded labs to function under the excise staff so since they are the government organization they are under the direct supervision of the excise staff and more over this type of the organization since it is under the total control of the government organization it is suitable for the large scale manufacturing next moving on to the outside bond manufacturing so as discussed this is the organization this is the lab which uh, otherwise is private but has the government approval to manufacture the products related to the alcohol so they are also licensed the construction of the non bonded lab has to be as per the law so like these both are the similarities in the case of in bond and the outside bond lab then third excise duty is payable at the time of the spirit purchase now this is the difference when we talk about the in bond manufactory the excise duty is applicable once the goods move out of the laboratory but this is not the case with the outside bond with the, the price has to be paid the excise duty has to be paid while manufacturing and preparing before preparation of your products so uh, this is not done by the excise staff and this is suitable for the small scale manufacturing so my dear student last three points are the point of differentiation between the in bond manufactory and the outside bond manufactory now it is very important to understand that either you carry out the manufacturing in bond or outside the bond so in the first case alcohol on which the duty has not been paid shall be used under the excise supervision and in the case of manufacture outside bond only the alcohol on which the duty has already been paid shall be used so in the in bond you are paying the excise duty after the manufacturing but in the case of outside bond you have to pay the excise duty while before manufacturing of the product now this is uh, the license to manufacture either through the in bond or through the outside bond has to be properly licensed so for the preparations which contains alcohol or other narcotic substances they have to obtain the permission to manufacture any of the alcohol related product from the narcotic commissioners and this is through while putting on a proper application with the prescribed fees and the format now what are the documents which are required for the licensing procedures so these are the detailed documents which are being required to be placed along with the application form and the requisite fees before the narcotic commissioners to get the permission so the details are required like name and address of the applicant place and site of the bonded laboratories if the applicant is a firm then name and address of the partners if the applicant is a company then name address of the directors managers and managing agents and registration number of the company amount of the capital which is being proposed 
number and full description of the vats stills and other apparatus and machineries maximum quantity of alcohol remaining at the time in the form of the finished and unfinished preparations so these details have to be mentioned apart from that the what should be the approximate date of starting of the production statement indicating that the excise officer required full time or the part time site and elevation of the plant of laboratory buildings in case of the firm true copy of the partnership deeds in case of the company list of the directors managers copies of the memorandum of the associations articles of the association and latest balance sheet so on receiving the application licensing authority would verify the qualification the experience of the technical staff which is being required apart from that what are the different sorts of the equipments suitability of the proposed buildings and soundness of the applicants financial positions all these details are being required apart from that when we manufacture in bond this is done once the in the payment the excise duty is being paid once the product moves outside the in bond laboratories so without the payment of the duty rectified spirit is being issued with the sufficient securities and the bonds so in the bonded laboratories you have access to the spirit stores without pre previously doing the payment so the room for the manufacturing of the medicinal preparations and the room for the storage of the finished preparation so they have to be adjacent room so that the movement is easy and the room for manufacturing and storage of the toilet preparations have to be easy accommodation for the excise officer with the manufacture with the proper furniture arrangements is there so these are all the ideal requirements to be placed for while the manufacturing is in bond next talking about the warehouse of the alcoholic preparations my dear students alcoholic preparations warehouses are totally very big warehouses where they are being stored and they are being assigned they are being issued from these warehouses for the manufacturing the storage has to be in proper conditions the, there has to be adequate require, record for the issue of these alcoholic preparations from the bonded laboratories and also there are some sort of the exemptions talking about the warehousing of the alcoholic preparations so these are basically used to store the alcoholic preparations on which the duty has not been paid so so this is for the in bond so the license can be issued by the payment of rupees 25 fees with the bond and securities duty will be paid at the time of removal of goods from the warehouse so once in the in bond manufactory the when the product moves out then they have to pay the excise duty all goods have to be weighed gauged and assessed the duty and the recorded no goods can be issued without the payment of the duty except this export from india or transfer to another bonded warehouse movement of goods between two warehouse should be done by bond and security of the twice amount of the duty goods can be stored for a maximum period of 3 years so this is as per the law these are the regulations established as per the law now what are the powers duties and responsibilities of the excise officer now as talking about the act they can inspect the in enterprises in both in bond labor laboratories outside bond laboratories then they can also have entry search and seizures detention of the person so suspension or revoking of the license they, it can be done summons notices prosecutions disposable of the seized articles or arrested persons power they have the required power to arrest the people power to make the rules so they they play a very important role in the manufacturing of the alcoholic preparations now as per the act the duties which are being assigned to the officers excise duty officers are like the checking the, the qualification and experience of the technical staff equipments and suitability of the buildings and application applicants financial positions visiting the premises at regular intervals counter sign on intent to get alcohol from the distillery so these are the certain major responsibilities apart from that they are also they can collect the duties excise duties and penalties articles which are seized should be handed over to the officer in charge of the police station articles seized should be disposed speedily persons arrested should be forwarded without delay to excise officers who is empowered to produce, produce them against the magistrate so that the investigation can be done so this is all about the act and rule pertaining to the medicinal and toilet preparations act please do like share and subscribe to my channel pharmacy pdf for getting further updates and also to get further information about the various acts and the rules thank you so much